When you need mealtime inspiration, it's worth shopping Baker's, where you'll find over 30,000 mouth-watering choices that excite your inner foodie. And no matter what tasty choice you make, you'll enjoy our everyday low prices, plus extra ways to save, like digital coupons worth over $600 each week. You can also save up to $1 off per gallon at the pump with fuel points. More savings and more inspiring flavors make shopping Baker's worth it every time. Baker's, fresh for everyone. Fuel restrictions apply. All right. Excellent. So actually it's okay. Excellent. All right. Well, okay. So, um, get started. Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode. And I've got a fantastic guest for you today, Brian Moody, and he's going to talk to us about infinite banking, uh, what it is, uh, again, this is not financial advice, uh, do your own research. And, uh, you know, we've had actually had a couple guests before Brian talk about it and kind of just uh, introduce the concept to you and see how you can apply it. And so, uh, Brian, welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, I know, uh, you know, what's really interesting is uh, I was thinking over the weekend, you know, how inefficient uh, capital is. Like, for example, you pay off your house and it just sits there and you're paying property taxes every year, or like your 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 portfolio, your stock portfolio is just sitting there. You, you know, um, you know, there's way to leverage that in more advanced ways. But talk about you and how you got into IBC, what it is, and, um, you know, uh, we'll delve into this discussion. Yeah, I'd love to. So I've always been interested my entire adult life in uh, in personal finance. And I'm also, I'm still with a part-time with the Air National Guard, a pilot in the Air Force. So on a deployment a number of years ago, I just kept coming across this book on uh, on my Kindle app that said, you know, books recommended for you. And it sounded hokey. It's called Becoming Your Own Banker. And I, I thought, you can't become your own banker. What does that mean? So I kept dismissing it. And it just kept showing up as the number one book. Finally, I was like, all right, it's 11 bucks. I'm going to read it. And I read it and it, I mean, it, it changed my life. So I got home from that deployment and, uh, and, and started implementing this. And over time, it, it literally changed the paradigm of how I think about everything money and completely shifted me from all the conventional teachings on, on finance, not all of which are bad, but I've, I, I've now started to come at them from a different angle. A couple of years into that, into practicing it for me and my family, I decided, man, I'm, I'm so passionate about this. It's what I should teach. It's what I should do. It's how I should transition from the military into civilian life. And I really love that uh, journey because the more I study finance and, um, you know, we can use the existing legacy institutions and, but for the majority of people, these legacy institutions, government banks, institutional Wall Street, uh, they're using people to make their money. So, um, you know, I love this idea when we can take ownership, um, we can use the system to help ourselves. So um, what is IBC and, um, you know, kind of talk about uh, how you can apply it to real estate or other um, avenues? Yeah, sure. And, and you know, like what you're saying, it's pretty wild. I, I mean, I'm not exactly sure of your age, but I have a feeling we're pretty close. I'm like right on that line of kind of Gen X millennial. Um, so, so, you know, we, I was an adult and lived through and had investments 2008, nine and 10. And if that didn't teach you something coupled with, you know, the last three years of our, our life and everything that we've all lived through, like that the, the government's lying to us, the institutions are lying to us. Nobody really has our best interests at heart other than, you know, small time things, you're, you're, you and your family, and, and we're surrounded by lies and deception. So, you, you know, like what you're saying is everybody wants to control the narratives. They want to control what we do. They want to control our money. They want to control so much, right? So what the infinite banking do concept does is it gives you a much higher level of control. And, and it really resolves a certain problem. And that problem is that we finance, Nelson Nash said in his book, we finance everything we buy. So we either pay interest to some outside lender, or we give up the opportunity for our money to continue earning interest if we pay cash. And, and so well, everybody, you know, he says in his book that if you get up, if you get a couple guys around the uh, the water cooler or, you know, in the break room in a hospital, what do they talk about? They talk about their rate of return, right? What they got in their money, but they're sending 20 some percent in volume or more 30 percent of their money out the door in finances. So what if we can solve that? And, and that's what the infinite banking concept does. It utilizes specially designed whole life insurance to solve that problem. And, and I'm happy to give some examples like you asked. But it looked like you wanted to say something. 
No, I was just, uh, um, it just reminds me of, cause you know, um, this IBC and then kind of, you, um, you have gold bugs, but gold is very inefficient. You know, it's, you can't love it. Like if you're going to, you know, 10,000 or whatever worth of, uh, gold, it's, you know, it's going to draw a lot of alarms. Um, and, uh, you know, but you know, there's like technological solutions to these problems that are currently in play, um, still very early, but, um, and I love this idea of just self custody and you control, um as opposed to they controlling you um so talk about the uh legacy planning and long-term financial health and um you emphasize the importance of thinking generationally when it comes to finances and what is legacy planning and how can you start doing that with ibc to benefit you your family and future generations yeah absolutely so you know the first thing when you when you talk about the conventional planning it's like we all get out of or whenever we start earning a living as adults was the first thing it teaches us to invest. Right. Yeah. And, and really the first thing we should be taught to do is save <laughs> because if you could save, you're going to get ahead of the game, even over the long run, you're always going to be ahead of the game and you're going to live peacefully when you know that you have something to fall back on. And so on the legacy side of that, you know, what the infinite banking concept lets us do is it lets us save methodically. And unlike conventional planning, then we can access that money throughout our lives to do all the things we do through our lives while leaving that generational legacy. So the legacy side of is of it is, and you know, we couple this with with building trusts, revocable living trust, and and other methods. But on the generational side, you're gonna leave a, an income tax-free inheritance that cost you pennies on the dollar throughout your life. Mm -hmm. And through your life, you're gonna have access to those pennies. So instead of locking your money away your entire life like a 401k does or you know most stock things most people aren't going to pull their money out of their stocks to buy a car right because <laughs> it just doesn't feel right you're going to lose too much yeah. we have access to the money it continues to grow as if we have never touched it because we're going to leverage that money within the whole life insurance policies and whenever we walk off this earth when we graduate from this earth it's going to transfer to our loved ones, our kids, our our wives, or whatever charity we want to give it to. So it starts to create that general generational legacy. And yeah. if we teach our family to do the same thing we do, we're three generations away from everybody in our family being born into multiple millions of dollars without ever having to worry, as long as we can keep that legacy going and teach those lessons to the next generation. Yeah. The other question I have is, um, because you talk about... Um, you know, these whole life insurance policies. And again, what's interesting is, uh, you know, basically capital efficient, you know, for example, just like, um, how about a cash out uh, refinance on a, on a property? Is that fall within the infinite banking concept? You know, because I know a lot of investors do that. And, um, you know, it's just basically recycling the capital, you know, putting it to use. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, it's very similar. And and I think that's a great thing. And as I mean, I, I own real estate as well. It's my favorite thing excuse me, it's my favorite thing to invest in. Uh, and it's an, it's a phenomenal <laughs> method that we've seen work for many, many, many investors until it doesn't. And the reason <laughs> it sometimes doesn't, and it, you know, when it works, it works, but one, there's two major problems with the cash out refi, the bird method, if you want to call it. And mm -hmm. I do think it's phenomenal. So I'm not even taking away from it, but nobody talks about the, the detraction of it, or, you know, or why, it, why it sometimes doesn't work. One, we can get over leveraged. And when 2008 happens and people were over leveraged, a lot mm. of people got hurt. Uh, so if you take it too far, it, it can harm you in that way. If you're not careful and you're not smart and you don't understand the investment. And the other thing is who is in control of that loan? When you leverage mm. that cash, are you in control of it? Are mm. you in control of the outcomes? You've given up control to the bank mm -hmm. because they're going to tell you how much money you have to pay back how mm -hmm. long the term is going to be, when you're going to pay it back, what the rate on that's going to be. And if something goes wrong, who owns the property? Well, I mean, uh, uh, the, uh, the bank, of course. Of course owns it. So yeah. that's what puts you at risk. Where, whereas when we, when we build capital within these whole life insurance policies that are designed to build capital quickly, mm -hmm. when we leverage that instead of the bank, it, one of the most wonderful provisions to it is you are first right access to that capital uh, with a loan provision that is uh, that is completely flexible that you are in control of. So there's there's no repayment plan required because that is leveraged money. The, the insurance company can't, can't lose money by loaning it to you because they're leveraging the capital that exists in your contract. So mm -hmm. what that means is if you have to stop payment, 
because something goes wrong. You have a tenant that destroys things if you if you rent your property and four months later, you still don't have a new tenant, then you can stop repaying on that loan for a short period of time. The interest rate is, it, it's, a, it's an extremely favorable type of loan. I like to describe it as a simple interest loan that compounds annually. And what that means is through the year, all of your payments are 100% principal. And at the end of the policy year, they're going to calculate that loan and by the daily rate and tack it on at the end. So imagine if you could do that with your mortgage and you didn't spend you know 70% of the money on interest and 30% in the beginning years on, ca- on uh, principal. And yeah, that unstructured loan provision, you can stretch it out 30 years, you can stretch it out 15 years. The, the, the point is you are in control of the entire equation. Mm. I love that. And I, I, and how does it, because uh, there's also other vehicles I hear people borrowing against their 401ks and, um, you know, very similar. Um, in that case, would uh, you lose control or, uh, or does the, um, you know, does like, for, for example, Fidelity retain custody of those assets or talk about that? They do. So whenever you borrow against or from a, actually you borrow, not even against, you borrow from your 401k. So just for easy numbers, let's say it's a hundred thousand dollars that you have in a 401k and you mm-hmm. want to borrow 50. The The most standard thing is a three-year term on that. Mm-hmm. And and so the, the company is going to give you three years at their interest rate, at their repayment schedule for their, t- their length of time. <laughs> and if you mess up on any of that, do you know what happens? Uh, actually, I've never been in that situation, but I'm um curious the audience would love to hear what happened when, if you borrow from that there's a couple of things that can go wrong if you leave that job with the 401k well the term repayment ends so you either have to pay it all back in lump sum or mm-hmm. they're going to charge you 10 percent fee on what's outstanding and taxes on the outstanding balance oh, so that oh, can become wow. a pretty hefty bill now i only talked about fifty thousand, and they also do have limits i don't recall what the current limit is i'd have to look that up but the point is like that, that can become a quick and sudden tax burden that you weren't expecting because you have that money deployed into another asset. Mm-hmm. So it, it can be troublesome. I mean, they can be great and they can be troublesome. Yeah. If you've taken your money out of the market and it explodes, you, well, you lost out on those gains. Right, right. You know, right. So there's a, there's a couple of things to think about there where you have, a, once again, given up control of that money to somebody else. Yeah. Interesting. The other uh, question is, um, for example, um, you know, the challenges with conventional financial planning and um you know a lot of the uh, audience out there they've got financial planners but from when from your perspective you know what are kind of your limitations of typical financial planning approaches and you know how do these uh, IBC address these issues and um you know offer more sustainable financial future one of the major things with typical financial planning is that it offers one solution so they want your money they want it on a regular interval they want to hold it as long as possible, and then they want to disperse it as slowly as possible at the end, <laughs> right? So who wants control of your money? And the question is, what are they doing with it? They're buying mansions and yachts and throwing it, and, they're psych- <laughs> and, and, and And within the funds, they're moving it, right? They want you to park it with them so they can move it. So where's the, just like, just like blood, just like water, like it gets unhealthy if it doesn't flow, right? Mm. Same with your money. So when you just park it, it's not doing as much for you as it is for the people who are actually making it flow. Yeah. And so, you know, comparing that now they want to do one thing with your money and lock it away until typically 59 and a half up to 72 years of age with infinite banking concept. And I'm not opposed to that, but the point is you can do both. And with the infinite banking concept, you can do both within. I can save my money in a guaranteed environment that, that can never go negative. That is that has a phenomenal return, better than most any other savings environment, and leverage it to do those investments, and leverage it to buy cars, and leverage it to buy real estate, and use it. So I can I can start using those dollars in multiple places at the same time, and nothing else that I know of gives me the safety of those options. That, that you know later down the road is is going to provide phenomenal protections, and it's creditor protected while it's in there. So you just get all these phenomenal benefits. And I could do both. Right. Yeah. Really fascinating. And um, then um, talk about, uh, so how can people uh, contact you and follow you and reach out to you and, um, you know, check out the book. I know you referenced that um, and those will be in the links in the show notes and, um, uh, and how can they follow you on social media? Yeah. uh, Yeah. Becoming your own banker by Nelson Nash. You can find that at infinitebanking.org. My current website, uh, you know, I'm not sure exactly when this is going to air, 
but it's perennialwealthconcepts.com. But it's rebranding. So in about two weeks, we're going to be rebranded to remnantfinance.com. And so it'll depend whenever you got your folk, you folks listen to this. Um, if one's down, check out the other. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at bmood135. And uh, that's actually the same for every social media channel that you can think of. Yeah, I love that. We'll have a podcast. The first episodes are coming out um, in May. Remnant Finance as well. Yeah. Yeah. And thank, uh, for all the audience, let's thank um, uh, for coming on to the podcast. And be sure to give his socials a like and follow. And um, you know, check out Brian's links. And thanks so much for coming on. Awesome. Thanks.